Um, this is how beautiful this place looks like. There we go. That's the ICET Robotics Hub where we are um, recording from today. There we go. Thanks to Melo. Thank you so much. It looks so exciting. And there's our there's our Africa map on the uh, South African map on the back there. Oh, you've been there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go and show them as well. Okay. Uh, for now, just showing them the leads and everything. And see how many leads we're collecting. I think we've got six bags already, eh? Yes. <laughs> So this is one of the most colorful offices in the university, like I mentioned. Um, we call it Cyber Robotics Hub. And as we enter here, we uh, just need to lock here because our we fellow, don't want to stay Yeah. That's the International Year of Fruits and Vegetables, the one that I was talking about earlier on Monday. Right, and then as we enter, coming along, um, I feel like I I was supposed to have a cameraman, eh? <laughs> so this is our map. Um, probably next week when I show you this, we'll have um, stickers indicating yes. at which part of South Africa we've been to. Mm -hmm. And then, yes, so this will be very exciting as well. And then, yeah, so this is it for now. Awesome. Beautiful. Thanks, Thanks Camilla. Thank you so much. The multitasking presenter today. So that was an introduction <laughs> of where we usually are. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gaspar, are you going to just read the house rules quickly and then I'll open the session? Yes, I just have to mute you. Okay. Thank you. Welcome everybody to today's session. We, <laughs> you just saw a nice hub there. We only have a few small house rules for today. I'd like to ask you to please mute your cameras to save data and bandwidth. Also to mute your microphones, to keep all the background noise to minimum. If anybody has a question at any point in time, please feel free to raise your hand. Or if you have some mic problems, please put it into the chat area. We will uh, send a link for our email address later on in the chat. In the chat, and then over to you, Tomala. All right. Thank you, thank you, Casper. Tomala, all over to you. Let's have another installment of ta -da, robotics and environmental sciences. I wanted to ask why was Casper laughing there when he was talking, but yeah. That's for another day. Please let me know whether you can see my presentation. Clear, clear, clear. Thank you very much. Yep. I can uh, see. Thank you so much once again for being part of this uh, session. Your three o'clock will never be the same again. Never. <laughs> it's a happy Wednesday once again. Uh, on Monday, we highlighted the International Year of Fruits and Vegetables, uh, which was the theme for the National Science Week that happened last year. And then um, Tuesday, which was yesterday, I spoke about the My 2050 Environmental Calculator. And then today we'll be focusing on the environmental calendar, specifically for the month of 2022, just like I promised yesterday. So for those of you who didn't see this yesterday, um, this is our environmental days. So each and every month we've got an environmental um, day that we, we highlight. Um, for example, looking at the month of January, we had Penguin Awareness Day, and then for the month, uh, and then we had World Environmental Education Day on the 26th, and then on the 31st of um, January, we had International Zebra Day. So today I'll be covering some few information concerning uh, the environmental days that we are seeing on the month of February, which will be World Wetlands Day that happened on the 2nd of March, and then uh, World Hippopotamus Day, which happened last week, the 15th as well as uh, World Pangolin Day, which was last week on the 19th, and World Whale Day. 
So just to let you know, um, these days are very interesting and the main purpose of these days is just to educate us and to, you know, um, raise awareness, like I said, uh, just to make us aware that we are not alone in this earth. We've got uh, the environment to consider as well. All right, today. By the way, this is all new. Uh, welcome to my new world, whereby I'll be highlighting the impact of robotics on our environment. So here I'll be um, using robotics to increase awareness of the world around us. The general class culture. The purpose here is to equip you educators, students, trainers, facilitators to coach a robotics team or to include this into your robotics team as well. Uh, please be brave to ask for questions. Um, use the chat box or wait for the question and answer at the end of the session. Please note that all the recordings will be available for registered participants on the MOOC portal. And for those who have not registered yet on the MOOC portal, there's a link there. Otherwise, uh, just tune in on the next session or later on on the question and answer session whereby we can show you how to log in into the MOOC portal. So yeah, um, just some few interesting things is that um, I saw that on the news they are saying that we must check out these robots made specifically for the solar industry. So I see that the US, the solar panel manufacturers, global manufacturing locations, robotics and automation have already been in the solar industry for years. The mower can work day or night and quickly adjusts to changing conditions. Sure. And then here I see there's a robot dog which is helping scientists understand hazardous environments. A four legged robot dog which is used to help experts understand how humans working in hazardous uh, environments such as oil platforms and refineries. So this is just to also help scientists indicate and come up with uh, recommendations for such industries as well. And I see here our minister is urging um, South Africans to address environmental issues while growing the economy. Uh, please let her know that I'm doing this. Um, I see uh, she was addressing the International Community Marked World Environment Day from the Department of Environmental Affairs. All right. So as you saw there on my introduction, I indicated that I'll highlight um, the environmental days for the month of February. So on the 2nd of February, it was World Wetlands Day. So it was aimed that the aim is to raise awareness uh, regarding, I mean, global awareness about the vital role of wetlands for people and the planet. It's an appeal to invest uh, financial, human and political capital to save the world's wetlands from disappearing and to restore those we have disregarded. An interesting thing is that on the second of February 2022. It was the first year that the World Wetlands Day was observed because uh, the United Nations International Day, sorry, the 2nd of February was the first year that the World Wetlands Day was observed as a United Nations International Day. Following its adoption by the General Assembly on the 30 of August 2021 in a resolution co-sponsored by 75 member states. So the theme was wetlands action for people and nature. It was the first, by the way. Um, some interesting things regarding the wetlands. Uh, wetlands uh, the benefits about wetlands is that uh, they are the natural water quality improvement. They improve the water quality. Um, they help when it comes to flood protection. They help in terms of shoreline erosion control, and they offer opportunities for recreation and, and authentic appreciation. Uh, they provide habitat to various animals as well. 
And I see here there's an article that says that wetlands do the job of expensive technology if we do let them. That's why I indicated that they do protect us from floods and the likes. And here's the link there if you want to learn more about um, how wetlands are doing that expensive uh, work of technology. And then I'm also going to highlight the World Hippopotamus Day. I just need to get this right because I'm used to saying World Hippo. I, in fact, I'm used to saying hippo. So now I need to get used to saying hippo to Thomas. So this day was celebrated on the 15th. Um, and by the way, a hippo is one of the world's uh, third largest mammal. Uh, it follows the blue whale and the African elephant, which are larger than the hippo itself. And did you know that the word hippo translates to river horse in ancient Greek? And uh, I would encourage, um, this is just a tip or just a, an, an idea that you can also design a, a Lego design of a hippo, just to create an awareness of this as well. And uh, there's only one continent in the world where you can find a hippo, which is here in Africa. So if you see hippos in other continents outside of Africa, it is because they were transported and they are in captivity just for educational purposes. And these herbivores live up to 50 years in the wild. And in captivity, they can live more than 50 years due to the medical attention that they receive and uh, yeah, that care that they receive. There are only two species of hippos on the planet. These include the common hippopotamus, this big one, and the pygmy hippo, which is a small hippo. So for more information, I would certainly encourage you just to type on World Hippo Day, um, which is one of the national day calendar in the environmental day. So some interesting things regarding um, robotics within the ecosystem uh, restoration. As you can see, those uh, gentlemen are putting on a camera trap. So a camera trap is a device that is used to capture images and videos of animals that are passing with, within a certain distance. So this uses um, different types of uh, systems on it. It uses your sensors, it uses your infrareds, you know. So this forms part of robotics as well and it certainly contributes into the ecosystem. And how does this contribute? For example, if we are looking for a certain animal and it's a big uh, national park or a nature reserve, and as we know, some animals only are active at night, so a camera tab can certainly be of good value to us. Uh, it can even show us certain animals and it's easier for us to even count certain animals and to get a close up of a certain animal as well. As you can see, these guys, they were posing for the camera trap. Um, it's, it's funny how animals know that a camera trap takes a picture. Look at that one there on the left, how it's posing. So I see here on some of the news, they say that um, customer case, a desert ecological restoration magician. So there was tree planting of a robot that was created. So a robot was designed to plant uh, seeds of a tree. And also I see here it's a spreading seed with a giant farming drill, which is what I was showing for those of you who were there yesterday that um, it's possible that you can use technology to contribute within the environmental sciences. The third day of the world of the environmental calendar is the World Pangolin Day. This day was celebrated on the 19th. Uh, the World Pangolin Day is celebrated on the third Saturday of February every year. And there are eight pangolin species which are protected under national and international laws. And two are listed as critically endangered on the International Uni Union of Conservation and Nature Red List of threatened species. The reason why they are listed there is because people hunt 
these pangolins, these pangolins for commercial purposes. This is similar to what they do when it comes to rhino poaching, um, but here specifically they hunt them for their scales as well as uh, for meat and uh, they make scales for marking wings. And at the same time, this really affects the population of pangolins. Um, if something that you need to note is that the reason why I had to also highlight this is that if pangolins go extinct, there would be a cascading impact on the environment. This means that pangolins save us millions of dollars or rents in a year for pest destruction. They play a very vital role within the ecosystem. These shy creatures provide a vital service and we cannot afford to overlook their ecological role as natural controllers of termites and ants. And by the way, please note that all animals, all insects have an ecological role that they play. So these are different types of, oh, there's a link there that just indicates where, where you can get more news and some interesting information regarding pangolin. Because I'm sure most of you are seeing this on the news, seeing that people got arrested because they got pangolin. Um, I'm sure from now on, you know what's the reason behind it. And the last day of uh, the environmental calendar within the month of February, it's World Whale Day. The aim of this day is to remind us of the challenges that these creatures are facing to thrive on the planet. Uh, before I go on further, uh, we all know that um, plastics um, contribute to the destruction of these animals, as well as uh, fishermen um, with their nets also disturb uh, these uh, animals as well. Some interesting thing is that uh, whales are helping us fight climate change. How do they fight climate change? With their poop. Their poop consists of iron-rich feces that create favorable conditions for phytoplankton growth. These are plants that are in the ocean. The tiny plants in the ocean that pull carbon from the atmosphere while producing oxygen. As, and uh, there's a handbag whales, which are fast, which fast for several months. The reason why they fast for several months is to allow the handbags to invest their entire energy into their marathon migration and reproduction. Um, some interesting fact about whales is that um, bubble blowing, they, they bubble blow to trap their prey and the uh, humpback whales and barred whales are known to trap their prey using a beaver called bubble net feeding. So this just uh, is one of those traps that they use in terms of feeding. And did you know that a whale's tail is the key to identifying individuals? So here, this is where we have that type of uh, technology that is used. For example, you can use a camera to capture different types of tails that you are seeing there. And then when you put them on a certain, or for example, when you just look at the images, you can tell the difference between the tails and this will becomes easier for you to even identify them and even to give them names. So this really shows us how technology is contributing within the ecosystem. Um, there's a challenge that I would like you to do. Um, the aim of the challenge, number one, is just to create awareness of the environmental calendar day by creating a robotics challenge. Here you can use uh, any recycled materials. For example, you can use bottle leads, bread ticks, as well as electronic waste. Now, what you will need to do is to select any environmental day in the environmental calendar, and then you share your video. Remember that you'll be creating a new environmental uh, challenge 
using any recycled materials. You don't have to be specifically limited to bottle leads or bread checks as well as electronic waste. So this is what you need, for example, for those of you who might not know where to start, uh, just need a tape, you'll need a ruler as well as a scissor and a mat. And then it will be encouraged for you to, to have a base, a starting point, as well as a delivering point. So how will this work? Let me just show you. So for example, um, if you have um, already have a, a set of a mat, at the bottom left, that will be where your robot will be starting, which is the starting base. And then there in the middle there, that's where your, your waste will be collected and put into. So what will, how will this be done? So for example, this is how you calculate your points, or these will be the instructions for your um, challenge. So here the robot will start in base, like I mentioned, and then a pile of plastic leads will be there. And then there will be a bin, for example, 50 centimeters away, or you can even uh, stretch it to 200 centimeters, depending on how you want to do it. And then here, you just need to create a robot that will push as many leads into the bin as possible within a uh, few seconds. For example, I did 67 seconds, and then uh, you deduct minus 10 points every time a person touches the robot. And then you calculate the score of the total challenge according to the number of leads in the bin. So let me just uh, show you once again. So this will be your layout, and this is how you can do it. Like this is how it should be done. Here's an example, I did this. So here we'll be collecting your leads, and then you just bring them within the where they should be, and then it just reverses. So like I mentioned earlier, um, we do not have to be restricted to leads. We can use any type of recycled materials. Remember using uh, recycled materials, it's a way of you showing us that um, you are implementing what you are being taught. And then you can even create a way whereby after your robot, your robot pushes um, the leads into the collection area. You can make it reverse. And those are the things that you can do. Now, I hope most of you went through the robotics and the environmental, uh, my 2050 environmental calculator yesterday. And like I mentioned, um, we have created our own uh, my 2050 environmental calendar map whereby we include all days. But these were the days that are in the June environmental day, which is the environmental day, the environmental, uh, the World Ocean Day, as well as the World Day of Desertification. We just included them as one. So even you, you can come up with something as long as it's according to the environmental day. For some of you who were not part of yesterday's session, here's a link of how you can um, go through the My 2015 environmental calendar, as well as debate with your robotics team and take it from there. And this is what you see there on the link, because there are different types of the My 2015 environmental calendar, but this one is the specific one that I was um, talking about just at the end. This is what you should find immediately when you get into the website. Otherwise, don't hesitate to follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, as well as on YouTube. Um, please share the My 2015 environmental calendar debate with the video. But otherwise, I would like to thank you. If you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to, I almost said email us, but you can, for now, just put them on the chat box or raise your hand or unmute yourself. Thank you so much, Jamelo. Once again, a packed presentation, and that's only the month of February. That's right. <laughs> All right. Anybody got anything to contribute, to share? I, I, I just said you must maybe email uh, the Minister Creasy and tell her what you're doing. 
I think I should. Eh? Mm. But, uh, but it would be nicer if you are the one doing it. Cause <laughs> OK, put it on the Monday agenda. We'll we'll chat about it. Cool. All right. Um, any questions on the floor? Anybody got some ideas of how they can? What is a really cool idea? Anybody? OK, whilst everybody's still thinking, I've got another one is um, if you want to do tree planting, maybe we can use recycled bottles and make them look like trees. Mm. <laughs> yeah. There was one thing I did see where you can use a drone to drop the trees in the ground. Yeah. Or the station. OK, so maybe we need to have a, see how many trees you can plant in what 67 seconds. Here we go. There is a challenge. OK, I'll just go through the floor and just hear what uh, our participants have to say. OK. Um, Alfie, Alfie C, um, kindly please unmute yourself and give us your inputs. Oh. All right. Uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah, well, uh, I've been following and I think I'm happy with um, the collection of leads that is going to assist us, you know, in um, having something concrete to build. But also from our side, it's just that uh, we're very hoping that maybe we'll get our robotics kit in time so that our learners and uh, the community around us can also, you know, start uh, something. Alfie, have you applied? Yeah, we did. I'm from Kids Zone. I'm the same at uh, the same school with Amanda. Oh, okay. And okay. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> cool. Right. Thank you so much. And then Amanda. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay. No, we're happy with the progress so far. It's just the same as what Alfred said, that we're just hoping to get our robotics kit and start with the learners because it's really interesting. And I think we're all very excited to start as quickly as we can. All right. Awesome. So, kids, what what um, environmental day do you think is going to be work for you? Um, I've got a few. Yeah, where did I write it? I okay. like like the World Ocean Day, mm -hmm. Wetlands Day, the Hippo Day, and there was uh, uh, the Whale. Where did I write it? World Whale Day. Actually, yeah, we can. Just come out there. There's really so much you can oh, do here, yeah. Amanda. Yeah, wow. and and we can do it over the holidays. Yes, awesome, awesome. Yeah, that's because we were just talking about that today to give the kids holiday homework, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah. awesome. Awesome, awesome. Okay. That looks like you have a plan. Looks like you have a plan. Yes, yeah, we have a plan to keep them busy. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Oh, Excellent. Uh, Mr. Alexander. I'm just a bit worried. Minister Chrissy finds out what you up to, she might steal you away from the eye set now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Alexander. <laughs> oh, thanks, Alexander, for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, dear. Yeah. I see uh, Chantal uh, said she's planning a project for students to create small greenhouses to give them an idea of how it works. Uh, if you don't mind, you can even uh, unmute yourself and have one or two words to say. Uh, hi there. Yes, I'm also from uh, Kids Zone College, and today we covered a few things with the environment, and we used that iNaturalist app. So oh. That they could, yes, we were going out, nice. uh, taking photographs of plants and flowers and trees, and um, just testing out how it works. And a lot of them got their feedback, and they got a lot of information of the uh, plants and what yeah. they actually contribute to the environment. 
Wow. And so we were discussing about a project for the school holidays for them to create small greenhouses. And even if they just grow herbs or um, any small plants that they can try and see how it works, and then they need to take care of that. Sure. That's, oh, that's one of information here for sharing. Mm. Yes, it's, it's actually very exciting. I'm in the process of getting all the materials that they will need, and it's all recycled materials. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Yes. Oh, oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, that's yeah. that's full news. Um, that's news, yes. What about David Dixon? Uh, what would you like to say? Hey, Tumelo, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> got me off guard there. Um, I'm actually just absorbing today, and I think. I found the 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 world well the world whale day quite interesting. I must say it's a lot of things I didn't know about whales. So thank you for that. But yeah, from my side, um, just listening today. All right. Thank you. Um, let me get. Let me look. Can I add one thing? Sure. So I'm I'm think I saw there there was a zebra day on uh, in January, I think mm -hmm. the 31st, the National Zebra Day. So I was thinking if you have a follow the line um, line and you put a whole lot of zebras, is it there? Yes, there we go. And you put a whole lot of zebras on the road and say, mind the zebra. Okay. So your okay. robot needs have to have a color sensor and it needs to have an ultrasonic. <clears throat> so when it finds a zebra, it can start counting how many zebras there are. And that also can contribute into the ecosystem because that's what we call animal sensors or game count. There we go. And if we're very clever, we can put a little camera on our on our um, robot as well. That's right. That's right. Okay, that's that's going to be my challenge. That's what I'm going to create. Okay. Love. Okay. Thanks, Tamela. I like it when we trigger, you know, ideas on this. Yeah. Um, Eric, uh, would you like to say something? Followed by Francois Anderson. Well done, Tamela. That was a very nice presentation. Um, um, yeah, all this, the environment stuff is kind of new to me. Um, I'm more interested in astronomy and I guess, you know, in terms of robotics, there's been a lot happening. I wonder if um, astronomy is too outside the whole scope. Nothing is outside the scope. Everything we accommodate and thank you so much. We also have to sit down. Because I know when I visited ISET and Dr. Host was showing us a a mat, I think it was based on Mars. It was really yeah. incredible. Yeah. Yes. We actually, um, UNISA has an observatory as well. And so once the campus is opened, we're going to have observatory days as well. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, Anderson, Franchos Anderson, followed by Fulu. Um, I'm just listening to the, my voice is busy going. I'm getting sick. No, 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 it's all good, all good. No, 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 no. I'm, no, no. I'm, I'm really enjoying these sessions uh, because I'm, I'm learning a lot. At the moment, there's nobody else that I can actually speak and engage with on this topic. So this is this is very formative and I, I'm loving this. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Fulu, followed by Hesti. Uh, Hi. Okay, Hi. Yes. I'm Esti. I'm from Pizza and College, also. Awesome. Right. And, I'm, and I'm focusing on the part of the robotics, except explaining in the grade R, R and grade 3. All right. All right. Yes. Esti, do you teach the grade, the grade R's? Yes. Uh, we need to talk to you. We need to start them very young with environmental robotics. Okay. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, SD. Uh, Fulu, if you have anything to say, kindly unmute yourself or we can go to Nashal. Nashal or Fulu or Nomsatwala. Like this, some microphones not working here, Jamila. 
I see uh, Chantel says we experienced great views through night vision and you see a lot of stars than you can with the naked eyes. Correct. Correct. Awesome. Um, once again, um, if you do have questions regarding today's session or any comments, can you please don't hesitate to unmute yourself or call them on the chat box and I will take care of it. Okay, so far I see there's no questions. Um, I'll just have to... Um, Tamela, what is the day where we all have to switch off our lights? Uh, that's the Earth hour. Earth hour, that's it. That's it. I thought we called that load shedding here in South Africa. <laughs> <laughs> See how aware we are of yeah, our But I feel hour. like here in South Africa, we don't need Earth hour, eh? Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> we to say have that our, own, uh, <laughs> our own Earth hour. We've been having random Earth hours. <laughs> Okay, so Earth Hour is where? March somewhere. 6th of March, yes. Yeah. No, it's not there. Oh, there is like, six. Yes, got it. Got it. There we yeah. go. I feel like even us, as um, I said to Nisa, uh, Nisa Science Engagement Center, um, we just need to have our own uh, specific project whereby we focus on and just to, for example, uh, looking at, uh, for example, on April, it says, uh, no, 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 besides April, let's focus on March. On March there, I see, for example, on the 20th, it says World Frog Day. Oh, wow. And there is also World Water Day or National Water Week, whereby we can... Um, start appreciating our water. As you have seen on the news, what's been happening now, there's a certain fever that's been going around due to contaminated water. So this just shows us that we need to start appreciating clean water and um, using our water in a very wise manner as well. Absolutely, absolutely. So maybe also on that topic, um, I've been to Carnarvon several times and every time I've been there, um, the dam has been empty. And this week is the first time there's actually water in the dam. Sure. I think the people have a new appreciation for water there. Yep. Yep. It reminds me of at um, Glen William Dam. That was also, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what they do with that one is, and literally in the January, not January, from March to April, the dam is almost empty. Empty. Yeah, yeah. Remember the, the year we had a the National Day. The uh, one farmer, he just went and see. Okay, I saw he saw the um, fence was going. It's got it's a little bit too short, so he went and extended it into the water. Oh wow! And then, um, yeah, then from that point of, I think it's from. Past April, yeah. the water starts to fill up to 100 to 13, 113 percent about, if I'm not mistaken. That's when the Cape Town gets its rain. Yeah. Yeah, and the reason why they, they almost drained the dam is because the dam right under it, the Bolsuk Dam, that dam, they, they don't want it to run dry, so they rather let uh, Clan William run dry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know you, we need to have a really big appreciation for the water that we do have at our disposal. I, did it. I remember my mother said one year, it, many, many years ago, they said the wall, the wall dam is going to take three years for it to f fill up with water. One week later, and the dam was uh, was over 100%. 100%. Yeah. I, it was Once easy. we have the water, we must appreciate it. Mm, and respect it because, trust me, you don't want when the Fall River comes down. Eesh, that's fine. Yeah, no, 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 no. Mm -mm. Okay. Um, otherwise, do you, ever, do you have any more questions? Any more comments? 
So I just saw the, on the chat box, um, I think it was uh, David Dixon uh, acknowledging that we should have an, an astronomy um, presentation as well. Okay. okay, well, thank right. you for that. We will definitely put it in our in our planning. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, David. Okay. Otherwise, if we still don't have any questions, um, I'll hand over to you, Dr. Holmes. Hello, team. Thank you very much. I want to thank everybody for participating in the conversation. It was really good. And um, and there's lots of ideas now moving forward how we can expand, expand this program. So thank you to Melo for a, for a brief introduction of the Robotics Hub and the exciting space it is, and then for doing your presentation again. Um, yeah, and thank you to the team. Um, I'm just, I see Anzani is here. Anzani, do you have the link for the additional information? Anzani? No, oh, sorry, I'm busy trying to unmute. Um, no, no, I have the link, no. You don't have the link? No. Okay, maybe add it to, next, to, uh, to the next session today. Okay. All right. OK, so thank you, everybody, for this discussion. Um, thank you for joining us. And maybe there's a greater or heightened awareness. And we look forward to our last installment of robotics and the environment. Um, we're going to so uh, we're now going to quickly take a 10 minute break and then we will see each other in um, the next session. And we're going to do some gearing and power detachments. All right. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you very much, everybody, for contributing. And we'll chat in the next session. All right, bye-bye. Thank you.